Hey there, friends. We've been talking for the last week or so about Hunter Biden's sweetheart plea deal and then how it fell apart with the DOJ and more specifically that federal judge in Delaware who was not really happy with the terms at all and how everything went down. We've actually got specifics of that agreement now. One of the things that kind of surprised me is that the DOJ is making Biden, at least they were making Biden, through this plea deal, acknowledge everything that he said he didn't do or was at least running from. They're making him actually acknowledge that officially in paper using court documents. The United States agrees that if Biden complies with all of the respective obligations under this agreement, the United States, within 30 days after the expiration of the diversion period, will file a motion with the court seeking the dismissal of the information. So that means there are conditions that Hunter Biden has to comply with. These are conditions I don't think a crackhead is capable of complying with. I'm going to go into a little bit of that detail. It also mentions Biden's candid acknowledgement of his historical drug use as well as his current sobriety. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Let's ask the janitors in the White House how sober they think Biden is. We know whose cocaine that was, right? <laughs> Current sobriety. I like that. Under commitments and undertakings of Biden, it says, it is understood that under the terms of this agreement, Biden shall, here we go, not purchase, possess, or attempt to purchase or possess or otherwise come into possession of a firearm during the diversion period or at any time thereafter. This means that Hunter Biden is forfeiting his Second Amendment rights. More on that later. But this means that from now forward, again, this is the plea deal that fell apart. So I don't know if any of this is going to be reconfigured, um, discussed again, or if we are going to go to trial. But nevertheless, he was willing to give up his Second Amendment rights in order to have this plea deal in place. He was also going to consent to a permanent entry into the Nick's background check system, agreeing that he will be denied via Nick's if he ever attempts to legally purchase another firearm. And this is where he gives up his Second Amendment rights. Forfeit to the United States all right, title, and interest in any firearms and ammunition involved on the charge set forth in the information, including but not limited to the Colt Cobra 3, I guess that's 385 PL revolver with the serial number. This is the revolver that his brother's widow ex-wife, who was his then girlfriend, tossed into a dumpster behind a grocery store because she thought he, being a crackhead and being high on drugs, was a danger to himself, her, and their kids, or her kids and his kids, not their kids. Now, here are some of the more specific conditions. He would be subject to pretrial diversion supervision as directed by the U.S. Probation and Pretrial Services Office in this district. So that's window dressing right there. There's no way they're going to put somebody in charge of supervising Hunter Biden. That's the president's son, at least so they say. That's not going to happen. It wouldn't have happened under this plea deal or not. They're not going to subject Hunter Biden to a probation officer supervision. Continue or actively seek employment. So get a job, basically. I wonder if they mean the jobs that he had that he wasn't qualified for, where he made millions of dollars from Ukraine and from China. I'm, I'm serious here. I wonder if they would consider more embezzlement and more corruption from other countries uh, buying that, I guess, favor into the White House, knowing that Joe Biden, of course, is his dad, I wonder if that's going to be considered a job. In other words, if somebody is cutting Hunter Biden a check to have access to Joe Biden, will they consider that a job or would that be violation? I think that would be considered a job. So he actually might be encouraged to do more of the corrupt things that he's done in the past to give access to his dad to other countries just so he's got a job. Because you know he's not going to go look for a job. This man's not going to, he's not qualified for anything. Refrain from unlawfully consuming or possessing any controlled substance. Well, that's a lost cause already. Again, we know whose cocaine that was in the White House. We know. Look, let's, let's get rid of this. If cocaine is found in my house and I don't have the level of security that the White House does, I'm going to find out who that was. I'm going to find out who that was. This is not like the White House, especially the West Wing, is like a Walmart 
where all you have is a security camera and you got thousands of people going through there within a couple days. No. You can play that all you want. Oh, there's a lot of people that come through here. It's the freaking White House of super tight security. It ain't a Walmart. So don't tell me you lose track of everybody who's coming and going and you can't nail down every single person that's in there, drug test them and find out whose cocaine that was. It's because you know whose cocaine that was. You don't want to find the answer. You don't want to prove the answer. Because if you drug test every single other person besides Hunter Biden, and they all come back negative, and Hunter's the only one you didn't drug test, well, we're going to know who it is. Refrain from using alcohol, whatever. Submit to substance abuse testing. I don't believe that for a minute. I honestly don't believe that. I, You have a known crackhead. There's no way this guy is either going to agree to that, knowing that you're going to do it, or if he agrees to it, there's no way anybody is going to actually drug test this guy because his whole deal would fall apart. And this guy is such an abuser and such a crackhead, and he's gotten away with everything his entire life. He's not going to change now. He's just going to keep doing it and ask everybody else, including Secret Service, to cover up for him. Submit to fingerprinting to the FBI. What I don't understand is it says the fingerprint cards will be withdrawn from the FBI's records three years after completion of pre-trial diversion. I don't understand why they would withdraw that. You've got a known criminal, a known crackhead, a person who had to make a plea agreement to stop himself from getting a felony and to stop from going to prison. So clearly the guy is a problem. You see what I'm saying? This is a person you want on the radar screen. You don't want to remove his fingerprints, which again, guys, let's look at it this way. This is the FBI. When they say they're going to remove Hunter's fingerprints, are they really removing his fingerprints? They're saying, we did it, but they're still in there. But my point is, why would you remove those fingerprints? Because this is the kind of person we want to be able to keep track of. Communicate in writing all international travel plans. Again, that's not going to happen because when he travels with daddy, they're not going to put anything in writing. They're not going to. So again, they're going to be able to violate this. And last, not commit a violation of any federal, state, or local law. You know what? As minimum as that one might seem, being the last one and probably they figured, oh, it's the least important. That's the one he's going to have the most trouble with. This guy has broken the law his entire life and gotten away with it. Never been held accountable. This is the closest he's been to being held accountable other than maybe getting kicked out of the Navy for being hooked on cocaine. That's probably the closest he's been to accountability. And now he's had this in his face. The guy has been a cocaine, a crack user. He's purchased firearms illegally. He's embezzled money. He's done things internationally that are illegal. The guy has broken the law his entire life and gotten away with it because of the cover of his daddy. There's no way he can continue on for the rest of his life without breaking additional laws. This is a joke. Just him going down and buying more crack cocaine, which we know he's going to do, that's going to be breaking a law. So nothing's going to deter this guy. Now, this was interesting to me that Biden agrees that he shall not himself or through any agent or representative make any statement in the litigation or otherwise repudiating or contradicting the statement of facts. That means the statement of facts in this document. So that means he can't write a book talking negatively about this. In other words, he has to go about his business quietly. Can't write a book. He can't go on a talk show and go, ah, well, you know, I agreed to those things because that's what it was going to take to get a plea deal. I did that just to get the plea deal. I'm done. No, he can't do that. According to this document, he's not going to be able to go out there and run his mouth if this plea deal is once again agreed upon. Now, I'm going to hit you with a couple of things that might surprise you. First thing I'm going to say is, and this won't be a surprise to you, I don't agree with the very obvious and the very present two-tier justice system. I've never agreed with that. Hillary Clinton should be in jail. Bill Clinton should be in jail. Um, plenty of Republicans should be in jail. There's a lot of people, because of who they are and what titles they hold, even in business, CEOs and whatnot, who should be in jail that n are not in jail. Epstein's entire client list, no one's in jail. There's a two-tier justice system. Our justice system is absolutely corrupt. Now, I respect a certain piece of our justice system when it functions properly because our forefathers put these things in place that had pretty good fail-safe measures in them. It's just that people have been put in place to corrupt those things, so they're not used appropriately. But I, for one, agree with Hunter Biden to a certain degree being held to account. You and I would not get this sweetheart plea deal. We wouldn't get this. 
So there truly is, just by acknowledging this plea deal, a two-tiered justice system. But this is, this is pretty close to Biden being held to account, right? That I agree with. And that probably doesn't surprise you guys. I'm going to tell you something that probably will surprise most of you, if not all of you. I don't agree with any of this stuff at this level being a law that should affect Hunter Biden or anybody else. My point is, I'm not on a crusade to save Hunter Biden. He's garbage. He's trash. He, If he fell off the face of the earth tomorrow, the world would immediately be a better place without him. He is a bad person. He's, he's scum. But these laws that he is being charged with should not be. I don't agree with the fact that if somebody has done some kind of a substance that they should have their Second Amendment rights taken from them. No, I don't, I don't agree with that. I'm sorry. Some of you might get mad. I'm sure I'm going to have some, some older gentlemen out there, oh, I can't believe you think that. I don't think, based on the Constitution, I don't think you should have your Second Amendment rights, which are unalienable rights, that are not given to you. You were born with these. And it says nowhere in the Second Amendment, those 27 words, not one time do they mention, unless you're taking drugs. Now, do I want crackheads running around like Hunter Biden with guns? No, I don't. I mean, I guess you could say I'm torn in that respect. I don't think it's a good thing. But I also don't see crackheads running around shooting people indiscriminately. That's not how they do it. Yeah, there's gangs and whatnot doing that. But you don't have a person getting high on crack and then they run into a mall and shoot a whole bunch of people. That's simply not how it works. That is not a byproduct of the drug. Again, am I in favor of that? Absolutely not. I don't think drunk people should be shooting guns. I think that you should distance yourself from your firearms whenever you're high or whatever you're doing, drunk, inebriated, whichever. And most people do that. Surprisingly, as much alcohol that's drank in this world, especially the United States, we don't have drunk people running around just indiscriminately shooting people in malls, churches, synagogues, or whichever. That just doesn't happen. There are plenty of other things to nail Hunter Biden's butt to the wall with. This right here, yeah, this is the one thing they got him on, but I don't think that this should be in place for anybody, let alone this idiot. Going back to some in this document, I do not think somebody like Hunter Biden, even though he is a despicable scumbag, should have to forfeit all of his firearms. Again, I know this is part of a plea deal. I know this is not like everybody else. Again, we wouldn't get the same plea deal, but I don't think that he should have to give up all of his guns, all of his ammunition, and never be able to possess a gun again. Now, is it going to affect him? Of course not. This guy's got Secret Service protection. He's always going to have protection. What if this happened to me or you? And all of a sudden, you have one of these wacko liberal judges that now, or prosecutors, that now feels like you need to pay the price because he's butt hurt because Hunter Biden had to pay the price and he was a fanboy of Hunter Biden. This judge, say you go to court and this judge tells you that now you have to forfeit all of your Second Amendment rights, give all your guns up, never be around ammunition again, never be around firearms again, not possess them, buy them, own them, shoot them, nothing like that. You can never protect your family again just because of that. The Second Amendment simply does not say that that is right. God save the queen, man. I'm sorry, I thought this was America. Peace out,